Welcome to a special edition of Five Minute Webinars. I'm your host, Mick Jolly. Our presenter today is an individual that you know as founder of PR Web, the press release newswire that revolutionized the press release, David McInnes. David, take it away. Well, thanks, Mick. Hey, today I thought we would spend some time on maybe an extended five minute webinar. We might run over five minutes, but I'm not going to cut myself off because I think this is an important enough concept that it, it warrants a little bit longer discussion. And we're going to talk about a content gist. And so what, what the heck is a content gist? What are we even talking about? Well, it's probably the single most important development in content marketing in recent years, right? It's as, um, as attention spans have shrunk, right? And we have a new generation of content consumers that are inspired and, and really demand short bits of content where they, where they have become very adept at filling in the gaps and, uh, be, and are driven by sound bites rather than in-depth content. We really need to actually reevaluate how we are providing content to these, to these content consumers, right? So content just as the compact retelling of your story, it busts through the attention barrier problem by giving just enough information. It is the gist of your story. It is the gist of your blog post, the gist of your video, the gist of your whatever your whatever piece of content you're putting out. It's the gist of it. It's the core elements of your, of your content. And it's persona-based, which makes it highly relevant. And it's, like I said, most importantly, it's probably, probably the most important part of this is that it's really easy to distribute. And so we're going to talk about, you know, what makes up a gist. But before we do that, I want to, I want to give a, a, a nod to Ray Bard. You know, the just formula is not mine, right? It's actually adapted from Ray Bard's a conversation we had with Ray Bard. He's a book publisher in the business book industry, very successful at what he does. This one discovery alone is transforming content marketing. He said, Ray said in a conversation I was having with him that all successful books have the following elements. They have the big idea. They have the nuts and bolts, they provide hope, and they entertain, educate, and surprise. If those, if any one of those is missing, the book is not going to be a success. And so this is the secret formula to persona content development. That was my aha moment. I had been, you know, working with uh, Brian and Jeffrey Eisenberg way back in the PR web days, 2005, 2006, about introducing persona-based, arch persona architecture into the press release space, into online PR. And it was a really cumbersome space. And when, when I, as I was sitting there speaking with Ray Bard and, and some other folks, it really kind of clicked with me that these are, uh, this is what he was talking about is a persona based content development strategy, right? So successful online content. And in our case, the gist, we decided must follow the same formula, must have a big idea, nuts and bolts, provide hope, entertain, educate, and surprise all in four sentences, right? or four little statements. And so you have 110 characters to do each one of those things and um, forces you to be concise, but it's very important. You know, remember we're retelling the story. So you're not just giving sound bites from the story, but you're actually trying to retell the story and uh, provide enough information that when the reader, if I read this thing, I should have enough information that says, okay, I get it. And I can walk away. I have engaged with your content. I, I got, you know, I either got what I need and thank you very much. Or, yeah, not, not really that interested right now. But at some point, at some level, I have engaged with your content. And I have the gist of your message. And like I said, this is something that, you know, really my aha moment when talking to Ray Bard was, was basically that this lined up beautifully with what Brian and Jeffrey Eisenberg had been talking about back in the early 2000s, right? Is this idea of persona-based messaging, right? And persona architecture. Now, there's really 16 Meyer, Myers-Briggs persona types, and they, they're they actually, Brian and Jeffrey are actually the guys that popularized this and brought it into the, and made it, made it popular in the marketing space, right, in online marketing space. But there's 16 of these things, of these different personas, and Mick and I have completely different personas, and he's probably more on the competitive methodical, I'm probably more on the humanistic spontaneous side of things. But they actually boil down into four different macro persona types, competitives, methodicals, humanistic, and spontaneous. So most of us are in one of those or we're on the edge of two of them, right? We're in the middle, straddling the center of two of them or, or somewhere in the, in the bubble, but, but, um, but these are the four macro personas. And so 
When you're talking about the big idea, you're speaking to your competitors. When you're talking about nuts and bolts, how do things work? Methodicals. Humanistics. Why does it matter? How does it make my tomorrow better than my today? That's your humanistic. Entertain, educate, surprise. That's your spontaneous, right? So this is um, very important to understand because we're going to use this as our foundation to build a content gist. So what is the big idea? The big idea addresses the needs of the competitives, right? Competitive, competitives want to know why an idea is superior. They want to be the first to know the idea. They want, they want to have an advantage over other people saying, hey, guess what I just found or guess what I discovered, right? To back that up, they need systems and results, case studies, backgrounds, kind of assessments, proof and validity, right? They, they're, they're really a demanding group of, of individuals that really want to be on the forefront and, and have some competitive advantage. And, and so this is how we, we address them with facts, right? Just the facts. So if we read, let's di dissect this just that we did for Cranberry. Native advertising or content marketing. Cranberry sits at the intersection of these marketing strategies, right? So first to know, right? Cranberry sits at the intersection of these, you know, it's cutting edge and it's, it's a strategy, right? This speaks the language of the competitive. Learn to speak the language of the competitive in form of the big idea. That is the big idea that we sit at the intersection of content marketing and native advertising. What are the nuts and bolts? You know, methodical types. This is for your methodicals, right? They want to know how things work. They want to dissect things. They want to, you know, how does a product or service work? You know, is this, why should I be paying attention to this? Um, how does it help me accomplish something? How do I use this thing? Right? They, they want to get into the nitty gritty and, and, and know how, how you're accomplishing what you claim to accomplish. So let's read kind of what we put in our gist here. Cranberry is a content marketing platform that utilizes true native advertising units to distribute your content. Now the word true probably is unnecessary, but, but it does tell them how we do it, right? We use native advertising to distribute content, right? And so basically we take your content just and we roll it into a native, a native format. And we're, we're going to have a whole different webinar on what native advertising and native content distribution is. But we distribute this piece of content for you in, in a native format. So provide hope, right? These, the humanistics want hope for a better world. And you do this by, you know, how does this make the world a better place? Um, how does it make my tomorrow better than my today? They like stories of comebacks, of beating the odds, the, the successes and triumphs of ordinary people. You know, put the spotlight on somebody else. If you're really brave and want to do something unique, put the spotlight on a, comp on a competitor. But, but for Pete's sake, take it off yourself, right? This is, this is something where we want to highlight the successes of other people, right? You, you don't want to stroke your own ego at this point in the game. So this is about other people and how you can make the world a better place. Let's see how we did this in our gist. Get more eyeballs on your content. Oh, hope. I can have more eyeballs on my content. None of us likes to create content, right? Spend time creating content that nobody sees, right? Get more eyeballs on your content. I got hope right? It, Cranberry expands your influence. Oh, hey, you can expand my influence by delivering your content to new audiences. Oh, new audience. I'm going to get new audience, right? So this, this, little, this little statement here that we put together for Cranberry is replete with, a, with those kinds of hope things, right? How does it improve my situation, right? And uh, how does it make the world a better place, right? If, if I'm talking to people that are really want to change the world and they need a vehicle to do this, I'm talking, I'm talking to things that, that would appeal to them. Now, entertain, surprise, you know, these, this is for your spontaneous. Entertain, educate, and surprise, right? Spontaneous types want to learn, but they want to have fun doing it. They, want, they like the joy of discovery and learning new things and having fun along the way never hurt. So is there something mysterious you can share? Is there any kind of oddities, something counterintuitive about your story that, that I can discover for myself? You know, what's, what's the, you know, seven tenths of the iceberg or whatever that's under the water. I, I want to know about the iceberg under the water. You know, you want to avoid cheap shots, vulgarity and sexuality. This is a time to be creative and those things don't really work. You know, we're not, this is probably the most dangerous of the four personas to try to speak to because it is very enticing to take a cheap shot or to try to buzz feed, you know, your way into, into an attention gap here, right? We're not, we're not trying to buzzfeed any headlines or images in this, in this process. We want to entertain, educate, and surprise without being deceptive, cheap, or vulgar. And so let's look at 
uh, how we do this, right? Watch this video. Oh, hey, sometimes the medium is the actual entertainment, right? When we do five minute webinars, we you'll notice that on the slide, on the slide deck, we don't provide a hope, um, entertainment and surprise slide for people because the medium actually is the entertainment and education and surprise, right? The medium of the webinar. So we don't have that in our slide deck. The medium is that, right? So watch the video. Okay, I'm gonna watch a video. That's entertaining, educational. It's not great. Okay. <laughs> okay. They That's just awesome. asked me to do something, that, but it's not great. Actually, it's not a great video. It's not the best video we could have done. But it's very educational and a little bit entertaining, you know. And, and um, so watch it, right? And then it's a, but it will help you understand how we get more visibility for your content. Okay. Now it's not a great video, but we're going to help you understand and learn something new. And that's where this comes together for the spontaneous types. I think this is the takeaway that I want to share from this. This is probably the most important thing you can do to improve your writing is just before you write, just before you even sit down to create or produce your story, write your gist. If you can actually come up with the big idea, nuts and bolts, the hope, your, your hope statement, your hope message, and entertain, educate, and surprise how you're going to do that, some stories to back each one of those up, you're going to have a very successful piece of content, whether it's in a video form or online long form or, or blog post or whatever, whatever form your content takes. If you can sit down and create the gist of your story before you write it, then you'll have a much more impact, impactful and meaningful message and you'll reach more people and you'll reach them in the language that, that speaks to them, right? Whether it's the competitives, whether it's the humanistic, spontaneous or the methodicals, right? You're going to reach, so you're, you're bound to reach somebody if you follow this formula. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us today on this webinar. Um, talk to us, right? We'd love to, to give you a hundred dollars towards your first native marketing content marketing campaign. So, you know, call us Mick at cranberry.com or, or David at cranberry.com for that matter. I may take longer to get back to you because it's the nature of what I'm doing every day. But uh, there's our phone number. Give us a call. And i um, happy to talk to you about whatever your content marketing needs might be. Or, or if you want us just to sit down and strategize with you for 15, 20 minutes, happy to do that. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Excellent. And thank you, David, for sharing your words of wisdom on the anatomy of a content gist. And all, all of you uh, listeners out there, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.